Hello, and welcome to our beginner series for Vue for Houdini, designed to help you get started with the product and start rendering in no time. In this video, I will show you how to light your scenes using standard V-Ray lights. This will help you understand different lighting types and guide you when lighting your own scenes. Please take a moment to download our project files linked in the video description so you can play with this scene in your own time. Now let's get started. I'm going to use this simple scene to introduce you to some of the light types supported by V-Ray. You can find some of the most commonly used lights up here in the shelf. Control clicking on these will add them to the scene. The viewport will be locked and automatically set to look through the light as if it's a camera. I will use the camera controls to move the light and then start IPR rendering. This light is of type directional. There are two major categories of lights, point lights and area lights. The directional light falls in the point light category. Lights in this category are infinitely small and produce sharp shadows. Other lights in this category are the ambient light, omni light, and the spotlight. Even though these lights are infinitely small by default, there are parameters that we can use to make them produce soft shadows. Select the light node and click on the V-Ray tab. Here, you will find all properties listed in different categories. The radius parameter determines how soft the shadows appear. By default, it's set to zero, which makes the shadows sharp. Moving the slider to the right makes the shadow softer. The intensity slider controls how bright the light is. We can also pick a color. In this case, I will use the temperature slider to make the light warmer. Let's look at some other light types. The V-Ray sphere light falls into the area light category. As you can see, this light is not infinitely small and we can adjust its size with the radius parameter. The size of the light also determines how bright it is and how sharp the shadows appear. Small lights with high intensity produce sharp shadows. If you make the light bigger and reduce the intensity, the shadows become soft. The next light type I want to take a closer look at is the rectangle light. It is also an area light and the biggest difference between this light and the sphere light is the shape. Everything else is the same, except this light has additional parameter for controlling the spread of the light, and instead of color, we can also use a texture. I will select a simple texture and use it to effectively override the shape of the light. Adjusting the directional parameter will make the light more focused. If I set the directional parameter to 1, the light will behave just like a movie projector. Instead of using these preset light shapes, we can also use custom geometry. The V-Ray Mesh Light allows you to select objects in your scene and turn them into lights. Drag and drop the spiral light geometry object into the geometry operator path. Enable Use Sob Geometry to make the light visible. V-Ray also support custom lights that closely match the properties of real light sources. Light manufacturers sometimes provide IES files that can be read by the V-Ray IES light to produce accurate light color, intensity, and distribution. All of those, however, can be overridden using the light's parameters. I will select the sample IES file and move the light so you can see how it works. To light this scene, I will only use rectangle lights. I have already created a lighting setup that I will enable now. This is a basic setup, and I encourage you to play around with it, explore some of the other settings, and make it your own. There are two more light types that I want to talk about. I will open another scene and start working on lighting it. We do not have lights in the scene yet. It's good practice to start a test render to confirm that there are no hidden light sources. The render should look black like this. If we check the alpha channel, we should be able to see geometry, which confirms that V-Ray is rendering as expected. We can use multiple strategies to light a scene like this. Let's start with the simplest. I will use a dome light with high dynamic range environment map, or an HDRI for short. We can get an HDRI from our Cosmos library. Click on the Cosmos button in the V-Ray shelf to open the Cosmos browser. Then click on HDRIs. We have many options here, so I will filter the results using the evening category. 
Find an HDRI you like, then click on the download button. I have already downloaded mine, and it's this Sun002. Once it's finished downloading, we can click on this green button to import it into our scene. This creates a dome light object. Let's start the IPR render again and adjust the lighting. Select the dome light node and click on the V-Ray light tab. Adjusting the color of the light while using an HDRI has no effect because the texture overrides the color. This is the HDRI bitmap that was downloaded from Cosmos. Because this HDRI is a captured spherical environment, we can rotate it and change the lighting direction. Double click on the light node to go inside the network. Then go inside the Cosmos Material Network and select the V-Ray UVW Gen Environment node. Use the horizontal rotation slider to rotate the light giving it a new direction. We can also link the Y rotation of the V-Ray Dome Light node to the horizontal rotation by copying the parameter and using it as a relative reference. Using HDRIs is the quickest and easiest way to set up lighting for your scenes. We could also use the V-Ray Sun and Sky system to achieve similar results. I will disable the dome light and add the V-Ray Sunlight. The sunlight is a directional light, so it only needs direction. The position is ignored. Rotating around the x-axis determines how high the sun appears in the sky. Rotating around the y-axis determines the direction, just like rotating the HDRI. We also need to add the sky. Create another dome light, and then go to the mat context, hit the tab key, and type sky. Select the V-Ray Sky node, and copy it by typing Ctrl plus C. Then go back to the object context, select the dome light we created, and go to the V-Ray tab. Paste the node path we copied into the texture slot. IPR rendering is still running and the sky is now updated. Rotating the sun adjusts the sky appearance as well. Like the dome light, we can adjust the sun's intensity and color. The turbidity, ozone, and water vapor parameters simulate different atmospheric conditions that can affect the color of the light. Experiment with these to get a feel for how they work. I will leave all of these options by default and scroll down to the Clouds section. Click on Enable Clouds and Enable Ground Shadows. This will generate actual clouds that will contribute to the lighting. Increase the density, variety, and the serious layer. This will make the clouds dense and add an additional layer of clouds at a high altitude. I also want to add some red lights on the radio towers. Go inside the lights object and copy the null called out. Go back to the object level and create an instance node. Inside the instance node, create an object merge node and paste the copy path. The points you see in the viewport are the lights positions that are extracted from the original model. This adds all points as instance points for the light. Now create a V-Ray Sphere light and assign it as an instance object. Make sure that the mode is set to full points instancing. Go to the light settings and increase the intensity to 1000. We also need to decrease the size to 0.1 and adjust the color to red. Play around with the settings and find the look that you like. When you're done, stop IPR rendering and start production rendering. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. By now you should have learned enough to create your own lighting and experiment with the other available lighting types. Make sure to take a look at the rest of the videos from our Getting Started series or check our blog and documentation for more product tips and tricks. I hope you found this tutorial useful. See you soon.